What the heck is Shred? S-R-N-E-D. So if you're a small business owner and you're listening to this and you're wondering, I have no idea what this is, you actually should pay attention because it could be worth up to a million dollars for your business if it applies and if you're eligible. But if you don't know the basic parameters of what Shred is and what it's all about, you won't know when, what would potentially trigger making a claim and when to pursue whether or not you may be eligible for this type of funding. So Shred stands for Scientific Research and Experimental Development, and it is a very unique type tax credit that the government of Canada has put in place to be able to encourage some research and development within our country. It is one of the more generous R&D programs, and the way that it works is that if you are a what we call a CCPC, so this won't apply to every single company, but if you are a Canadian-controlled private company, that's what CCPC means, meaning you're a small company that's really truly controlled in Canada, you can be eligible to get back 35% of your eligible spend on R&D activities. So that is that could mean up to about just over a million dollars. So there's typically a cap, meaning you can really only spend up to about three million of what they'll actually reimburse you for. And you would get back about 35% of it as a cash refund. Again, like anything when it comes to taxes, there's a million caveats, a million disclaimers, read all of the fine print, but it is enough money on the table that it's worthwhile digging into to figure out whether or not it's an opportunity that is available to your specific company. So the way that you're going to go about determining it is actually just doing a simple Google search for Shred and go or find a way to get yourself to the CRA website. They happen to have quite a few different online resources to be able to take you through a process to figure out, am I even in the ballpark of pursuing one of these claims? There are all kinds of firms out there that will do this for you. They tend to work on a contingency basis. So they'll tend to reach out and they'll say, hey, it looks like you might be eligible for something like this. You may or may not want to work with one of those companies, but you should be aware that if you work with them, you're probably going to be forfeiting about 30% of whatever tax credit you're able to get. So if you are one of those lucky companies that does have eligible R&D that you're incurring and you choose to work with a company on a contingency basis, you're basically basically going to be shelling over about, you know, potentially 300k for them to do this work for you. Or you could just spend five, 10 minutes now to find out whether it's eligible and also to reach out directly to the CRA representatives that look after this program, because there's a ton of support and resources out there if you tend to meet the eligibility requirements. So what we're going to do is walk through a five part test that the CRA has shared under their self-assessment learning tool for shred claims and just kind of walk you through at a very cursory level. What are the things you should be thinking? thinking about. So this is not whenever you're kind of like ready to file. When you're ready to file, you're going to want to do a ton more detail and a ton more digging. This is really intended to, to plant an anchor in your mind to kind of trigger whenever you're doing activity, maybe you're building a really unique app or you're working on coding or programming or something. And you're saying, wow, we're really doing something that's pretty like leading edge or cutting edge or something we've never done before. It's to trigger you in those situations to say, ding, 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 might there be a shred here? And knowing how big the dollars are at stake, it's worthwhile to then come along and do a little bit more digging in a little bit more detail. So what we're going to do is actually open the CRA self-assessment learning tool. And we're going to walk through, they basically have a two-step process and step one is actually a five-step process. So step one overall is figuring out, do you have some kind of R&D at play here? And then step two, we're not going to cover in a lot of detail. Step two is where you start to go through and you figure out, okay, I've determined that my project really does have true R&D that's eligible. Step two is when you're actually going to go through and you're going to figure out, okay, well, the project was at play, but what expenses are eligible, what isn't, and you kind of start going nitty gritty down that particular path. But before you get to that path, you need to actually establish that there truly was some R&D at play in whatever, you're, in whatever you're working on. And this is the more important part for you to kind of anchor in your mind to remember, because this is what's going to trigger you down the road when you're working on something to say, could this possibly be shred? And if so, is there an opportunity involved here? Okay, so it's going to give you all kinds of things. You can see it's like a seven page. Um, it does have some different kind of logic built in. But basically, in step one, you're figuring out, 
am I shred eligible? Is the spend shred eligible, yes or no? And the first part is going to be determining that there's some type of what we call scientific or technological uncertainty. So you might be working with technology. Maybe you are building an app. Maybe you're putting together a website. Maybe you're doing something else in the digital space, but there's not really any uncertainty. The coding exists, what you're building exists. There's really not anything out there under the sun that's really brand new. You're using technology, but there's not a significant aspect of uncertainty associated in what you're doing. Um, the way to kind of know that there's some element of certainty or some not element of certainty is these four kind of like criteria that tend to rule out to tell you uh, there's not really significant uncertainty involved. So the four criteria that you can see here is like there's a really straightforward application of a solution that's publicly available on the internet, you know, or you're applying procedures or techniques known to you or that you were fairly certain were going to work out. Or frankly, you could have hired a consultant who knew how to solve the problem, or you could have gone to your vendors and partners and said like, hey, how do I do this? So what this means is if you are new in business and you're creating your website for the first time and you're like, oh, there's technological uncertainty because I don't know how to register a, do register a domain name. Sorry, not going to qualify, right? Because those are the type of things that you can find out from others. There's not technological uncertainty. Just the fact that you don't know how to do it doesn't establish technological uncertainty. So that's the first, that's the first kind of test of figuring out, you know, if there's no uncertainty, it's kind of a, it's kind of a no-go. The next part is what you were doing, did it involve kind of creating these different hypotheses to reduce or to eliminate that uncertainty? So if what if there was some element of technological uncertainty, but you just basically abandoned the program the, the problem, so there was something there, you don't know the technology, and you just said, you know, forget it, we're not even gonna attempt it. Or you said, you know what, we're going to completely work around it. We're going to, you know, they give some examples here about just like lowering your quality criteria or changing the specifications. If you basically said there's technological uncertainty or scientific uncertainty, but we're going to work around it rather than work through it, then again, you're not going to kind of be meeting the second part of is there true R&D at play. And then step number three is was the overall approach consistent with a systematic investigation? So really what you're thinking here is like, did you follow some semblance of a scientific method? So basically, did you randomly throw darts at a wall or did you go very systematically through a particular process? So it's kind of really looking for some indications of, of being systematic. Okay, so now you've crossed the first three hurdles. The next one is, was it undertaken to get some kind of an advancement in science or technology? And so if you kind of think the other ones are more around uncertainty, there's a very close relationship between uncertainty and advancement. And you're going to want to kind of read through this in a lot more detail if you think that what you're working on triggers it. But advancement is very going to be very, very closely related to uncertainty. What is important to know with advancement is that your project actually does doesn't have to succeed. So if you run a test, you had your hypothesis, you determined your variables, you ran your test, and you actually, you didn't achieve what you had set out to achieve, you know, your test quote unquote failed, that does not rule you out. That does not mean that that was unsuccessful. It's really that you went through it in a fairly systematic approach with step five number being, well, did you record any evidence of it? So again, with anything that you're dealing with in the taxation or accounting or finance space, you're going to want to always be keeping very detailed records of the way that you're working. You want to make sure that you can demonstrate that you actually had certain hypotheses that were being tested and that you kept the results. So it's not enough if you did all four or the group parts and you passed all of those hurdles, but you say, you know what, we put it all on a whiteboard and we just whiteboarded it all away. Like, no, make sure you're actually keeping a record of what you're doing. And of course, the more documentation, the better. So that really is a critical aspect of making sure that that's in place. That gives you a very, very rough skeleton. If you kind of get to that point, you say, you know what? I think we are dealing with a potential shred play. Definitely do a little bit more digging into it. Reach out to some of the CRA departments that actually look after this project. And they're usually able to be a huge help and a huge resource for you in um, taking you through the process. I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope that you kind of like keep this in the back of your mind as like, hey, maybe someday I'll be like working because because the thing is you might not have a shred play at 
in, in your company right now, but you really don't know um, with everything happening in the technological ecosystem, you really don't know when you might be working with a company that stumbles across this. And frankly, regardless of what role you happen to be in that company, it's pretty valuable Anyone in any role, whether product development, project manager, marketing, it really doesn't matter what area you are. If you're able to find the company in billion dollars, pretty sure that would be very, very well received. So yeah, I hope this was super helpful for you. I wish you all the best in your business ventures and be sure to check out financeloadinglab.com for more uh, tips.